What's going on? Welcome back to Talking About Baseball. Today will be the first episode of the podcast of off-season news, so let's get into it. So basically how this podcast is going to work is I'm just going to talk about my opinion and basically just what's happened over the last week. It's going to be split into kind of different sections of what happened. So let's get started with the Gold Glove winners being announced. I have a video upcoming on that. I have the highlights of both the NL and AL players that received Gold Gloves. In the NL, it was catcher Patrick Bailey of the Giants, first baseman Christian Walker of the Diamondbacks, second baseman Bryce Terang of the Brewers, who also received the Platinum Glove Award. Shortstop Ezekiel Tovar of the Rockies, third baseman Matt Chapman of the Giants, left fielder Ian Happ of my Chicago Cubs, center fielder Brenton Doyle of the Rockies, right fielder Sal Fralick of the Brewers, pitcher Zach Wheeler of the Phillies, and utility man Jared Triolo for the Pirates. In the AL, it was Cal Raleigh, catcher for the Mariners, who also received AL Platinum Glove. At first base, it was Twins first baseman Carlos Santana. At second base, it was Andres Jimenez of the Giants. At shortstop, it was Bobby Witt Jr., superstar shortstop for the Royals. At third, it was Alex Bregman for the Astros on a contract year. In the outfield, it was Stephen Kwan in left for the Guardians, Dalton Varsho in center for the Blue Jays, Willie Abreu in right for the Red Sox, Seth Lugo pitching for the Royals, and Dylan Moore, the utility man for the Mariners. Moving on, we've got some free agency news. Michael Waka signed a three-year contract to go back to the Royals. He formerly had a two-year, $32 million deal that he signed last offseason, but opted out of $16 million remaining. This contract begins with $18 million in 2025 and 2026, followed by $14 million in 2027, and a club option that would make it a four-year contract in 2028 for another $14 million. Nathan Eovaldi opted out of his Rangers deal, leaving $20 million on the table after posting a 3.73 ERA for Texas in 2022 and 2024, as well, of, as well as, of course, winning World Series with them. 13 players received qualifying offers this year. A qualifying offer is a $21 million one-year deal that are almost never taken. This gives the team another year to have a chance to extend the player if the player does accept it. There's not been a player that did accept it in a pretty long time, and this is kind of similar to the idea of a franchise tag in the NFL. The 13 players that received it are... Juan Soto, formerly of the Yankees, Corbin Burns, who was on Baltimore, Alex Bregman, the third baseman, who we were just discussing as he got a gold glove, Max Fried, left-handed pitcher who was on the Braves last year, Willie Adamez, who you'll be hearing about later, Pete Alonzo, who had some crazy playoff home runs for the Mets, Anthony Santander, who broke out for the Orioles this year, Teoscar Hernandez, who was just in the World Series with the Dodgers, Nick Pavetta, pitcher for the Red Sox, who I think has one of the better chances of accepting it, Christian Walker, who we also just talked about winning a gold glove, pitchers for the Mets last year, Sean Manaya and Luis Severino, and finally Nick Martinez of the Reds, another guy who I think may have a chance of accepting it. Moving on to some small news about the trade market, the Athletics and Blue Jays do plan to keep their stars after tough years. I'm talking about Brent Rooker and Bo Bichette. Brent Rooker is coming off of a monster year. Last year, he had 30 home runs in a pretty respectable season in an all-star year, but this year he truly went off, posting a 5.6 war, hitting 39 home runs, 112 stolen, wow, 112 RBIs, hitting almost 300 with a 293, 11 stolen bases, surprisingly, for a guy who's not very fast, and a 165 OPS+, plus, showing that he is truly the best player on an Oakland team that definitely needs some stars as they move into Sacramento and eventually Las Vegas. The Blue Jays' star is Bo Bichette, and if you just became a baseball fan last year, you probably don't think Bo Bichette is much of a star. Last year, he posted a negative 0.3 war, f- just just four home runs, a 225 batting average, and a 71 OPS+, plus, and he missed half the season with injury. His defense is also quite suspect, so after hearing all that, you probably don't think he's very good. But... But between 2019 and 2023, which was just last year, he accumulated 18 war, hit almost 300, and had a 125 OPS+, plus, along with nearly 100 home runs to go along with that. Late in the year last year, he suffered an injury, and really since then he has not been himself, so we'll see if he's able to rebound after that injury in 2025, but the Blue Jays do expect to hang on to him as much, and at this point there's no reason to trade him for the lowest you could possibly get. Moving on to some managerial moves, two teams that were just in the playoffs and made it pretty far. First, we have the Padres, who of course 
who of course lost to the Dodgers in the NL Division Series after losing the last two games. Their manager, Mike Schilt, who I'm not super fond of, did get a two-year extension. He already was guaranteed a contract for 2025, so he had this two-year extension will run through 2027. The Yankees have accepted the 2025 club option on Aaron Boone. Somewhat surprisingly, even though the team made the World Series last year, I think me and many other people do not regard Aaron Boone as a very good manager. So we'll see how that ends up for the Yankees that may be without Juan Soto next year. We've got some position changes up next. Some of these players are free agents. Some of these players have played these positions before, and some of them are moving to them for the first time. First, we have free agents Willie Adamas and Alex Bregman reportedly moving off of their current main positions, shortstop and third. Willie Adamas plays shortstop, but he's not really amazing there. He has a great... So he will be playing shortstop, most likely in my opinion. On the other hand, another guy who it doesn't really make too much sense for him to move off of it is Alex Bregman in third base. We just discussed him getting a qualifying offer as well as him winning the gold glove at third. This is the reason that he probably won't move off third. He has played second base and shortstop in the past because he's not... Act He's not usually your typical big third baseman. He's a little bit on the smaller side, but if he's going to be winning gold gloves at third, you might as well keep him there. Mookie Betts is reportedly moving back to the infield in 2025. He played there the, at the beginning of this year, and then following a pretty long injury, they moved him back to right field for the rest of the year, which clearly worked as the Dodgers won the World Series this year. And then a somewhat surprising one, Wilson Contreras, after suffering two injuries while catching this year, will be moving basically permanently to a first base DH role and will not be catching much in 2025. This is going to be an interesting move as paying a first baseman as much as the Cardinals are playing will paying a first baseman as much as the Cardinals are paying will Wilson Contreras right now is going to be interesting. So we'll see how that ends up for him as the Cardinals are going to are going into an offseason for the second straight year with a losing record. Moving on to some Chicago news, the White Sox want position players in return for Garrett Crochet, and they'll probably be able to get a lot of position players if that's all they want. Garrett Crochet is garnering a lot of interest, and the White Sox know they're going to need a lot to trade him away. Just now, we've gotten some news that the Mets could be a surprise potential suitor for Crochet, which would make their rotation really nasty, despite the fact that they are probably losing one of, if not both, of Sean Benaya and Luis Severino this offseason. In more Chicago news, longtime Cub Kyle Hendricks signed with the Angels on a one-year $2.5 million deal. He ended his Chicago career on a good note with a seven straight shutout innings in his last game as a Cub, which came late in the year, and it was very cool to see as a Cubs fan and very sad to see him go, but him having a very high ERA last year definitely meant it was time for his way out, and I don't know, maybe he could lead an Angels rotation to a good season, but if I had to guess, probably not. And finally, to end off this video, we've got the biggest news of the week. The Yankees and Mets are officially meeting with Juan Soto, and it seems like it's going to be pretty clear that the two-horse race for him is down to them already. I think the Dodgers are pretty much out of it. I don't think they're willing to spend $1.3 billion between him and Otani. I think they're willing to spend $2 billion between him, Otani, and Yamamoto, only three players. And then... Another piece of big news, which this might be a guy that the Dodgers are willing to get, Roki Sasaki has officially been posted to the MLB. It was unlikely that he was going to, coming off of kind of a rough season last year. Coming off of kind of a rough season last year in Japan, obviously he wasn't that bad. A rough season for him was a 2.76 ERA as just a 22-year-old. He was still lights out in 111 innings. He struck out 129, but that's just not as good as he was in the years before. So, like I said, coming as a bit of a surprise for him, but he will still probably get upwards of $400 million this offseason and we'll see what team it, it comes from. I think there's a lot of teams that could definitely get him, a lot of teams with Japanese players, a lot of teams that need a pitcher, and Roki Sasaki might just be the best one on the market coming off of this season coming off of his career in Japan. Across his career in Japan, he has a 2.02 ERA with 524 strikeouts and 415 innings. Mind you, he is just now turning 23. He started his career in the league at just 19, and since then he has turned obviously 20, 21, 22 last year, and he has just continuously gotten better. He pitched in the World Baseball Classic for them in early 2023 and absolutely smoked everyone during that, 
and I think this will be a great signing for whatever team gets him. Big news that Roki Sasaki is coming to the big leagues, and I think this is going to be be one of the biggest contracts of the offseason, probably the second biggest behind only Juan Soto, who, like we already discussed, is going to get a bag this offseason. Thank you for watching my first off-season news. I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to be making these all off-season, probably about once a week. Might be a little bit more often, might be a little bit less often. Kind of depends on what time of the year it is. When a lot of free agents are signing all the time, I might be doing one three times a week. We'll kind of see what happens. We'll gauge it, and I don't want to get too overwhelmed with it. And once again, I hope you enjoyed. More videos coming out soon. I'll see you next time on Talking About Baseball. Bye.